guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you all of my makeup tips for mature skin. If you struggle with products settling into fine lines and wrinkles, or if you're dealing with any dryness, this video is for you. So typically as we age, the oil glands in our face stop producing oil like they once did. This is why when you get older, typically you are drier, you have more fine lines and wrinkles because that hydration is no longer there to keep your skin dewy and supple. So we want to add hydration in. I'm going to be giving you all of my tricks, all of my tips on just how to do that. If you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I cannot believe I almost forgot to mention my model today is my beautiful mother. Thank you so much for joining me so I could do your makeup and make you look even younger than you already do. All right, we're starting off with priming the eyelids with the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Full Coverage Concealer. Now, this is a hack that I use. Instead of using an eye primer for your shadow, just use your concealer. Most concealers work great with this. Um, I just take the concealer from the lash line all the way up to right underneath the brow. And you can see I'm using my finger and also the brush. We just wanna make sure it's buffed in very nicely. Now, this concealer is a little bit lighter um, than I would usually go for, but we are making it work. She's nice and bronzed from her vacation. So for eyeshadow, I am going to use the Scott Barnes Sculpting Palette, which is bronzer. I am going to take the bronzer and really work it into her crease, as you will see. A bronzer is a fantastic way to get a really pretty shadow, and it's kind of foolproof. I'm taking a fluffy brush and working that bronzer from the outside of the eyelid into the inner corner. Now, if you watch, I'm not being super particular. It actually looks like it's on a time lapse. I'm going so fast, but I'm not, I promise. So I'm working it in, taking it and dragging that product. Again, nothing at all, nothing particular at all. And taking the bronzer and working it a little bit down on the eyelid. If you want this look to be a little more dramatic and still wanna use a bronzer, you can honestly pack it on the lid if you would like. There's nothing more timeless than natural shades. I really believe that, and that is exactly what we're going for. Okay, for the brow, I am going to use the Benefit Precisely My Brow. Now, there is nothing more youthful than a lifted brow. It frames the face and really can give an eye lift and make you look so much younger. So I'm taking the product from the inner corner and working it up towards the arch. I'm kind of framing out the brow right now. And then now I'm taking the tail down. You can see they're quick hair-like motions. We want it to look like hair. We don't want to look like it's been drawn on. So I'm really working on that tail. And then I take the pencil on the hair in the inner corner and go up because that is how it naturally grows. Now, as we age and mature, our brows thin. So that is why a full natural looking brow makes us look younger because when we're younger, we have more hair in our brows and as we age, it thins out. So you'll really be able to see the difference that those brows make on her face. But I am gonna go ahead and film that other brow off camera. I'm using the NYX Professional Makeup Retractable Eyeliner. This is in the shade brown. I love this shade for everyone. And I'm taking that pencil right in her waterline. So you'll see I have her look up. Now, I tried to zoom in so you could see, but I'm taking the liner and working that in her waterline and on her lash line and buffing it in. Now, you don't have to be super particular. You'll see here in just a second, I'm actually gonna take an angled brush and buff that shadow out. And there's nothing wrong with that. I always, always go in with an angled brush and buff out my liner because I think it's 
much prettier than a harsh line. Okay, so anytime there's any puffiness on the lid or the under eye, I always start with eyes first because there's always transfer that happens for the under eye. So I'm just wiping that away before I prep the skin for foundation. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk, talk about some tips. For mature skin, you want to always be sure to apply a serum before your foundation. As I had said earlier, as we age, our sebaceous glands stop producing as much oil as they did when we were younger. So that can kind of leave that product just sitting on the face. It can get dry and crepey and it's not a good look. You wanna look for products with ingredients like hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. Both of these products add hydration to the skin. Prepping the skin with a serum will help your foundation glide on easier and prevent your products from settling into fine lines and wrinkles. I am going in with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Hydrating Primer. This is a 10 out of 10 recommend. It is more like a serum than a primer. I usually do not use primers, but it is fantastic. It's all the rage right now. It's one all kinds of awards. The reviews on it are fantastic. It is loaded with hyaluronic acid and niacinamide, which again, leaves that skin very hydrated, which only helps the product that we add on later, the foundation and concealer to look flawless and very dewy. An area of our skin that typically gets neglected when we are prepping our skin for makeup is our under eye area. Now, you do not have to spend a bunch of money on an eye cream. You can use an eye cream, but you can also use a facial cream or moisturizer, just something a little bit heavier than what you use all over your skin. Prepping your under eye area will just help your makeup not settle. Even if you're not using a concealer, then you are still taking that foundation up to your under eye and it is just not pretty if it settles into fine lines and gets crepey and dry and yucky. Now I am using the Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado for her under eye area. I feel like this product tends to brighten a little bit and I really do like it. Now you'll see I'm taking my ring finger to apply this product. It just helps with not using too much force with that really delicate skin under her under eye. But again, hydration, hydration, hydration. This will help your product go on very smoothly. And I really think it will make all the difference and you'll be happy with it. Okay, so before applying her foundation, I'm going to give you a few tips on what to look for in a foundation for mature skin. Now, don't be mistaken. This can be anywhere from mid to late 30s up. There are so many foundation products on the market, it can definitely get a little overwhelming. But in the last few years, I have noticed an increase of foundations with skincare properties in them. And you are looking for ingredients like niacinamide and hyaluronic acid that can be found within that foundation. Now, if you already have a foundation that you're happy with, but it does seem to be a little drying or too matte, don't be afraid to add a facial oil to that foundation. One little drop would be plenty. I am using the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This has SPF 25 and of course, all of the skincare properties that I said to look for, hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. Now, this is advertised as more of a skincare product than a foundation, but it is, as you can see, a foundation with medium coverage. Now, I kind of just slop that foundation on her face and then I blend out. Now, if you notice here, I'm avoiding the under eye area because we are going in with a concealer later and we don't want layers of product because the more product you have on the skin, the more product that will settle. So less is definitely more when we are talking about a dewy, flawless finish and no settling into fine lines or wrinkles. Now, I always take the product and I work from the center and work my way out and up towards the temple. 
I love to use a flat top foundation brush. I just like the way that it maneuvers the product. I don't feel like it leaves any streaks or lines. Um, I do use a beauty blender sometimes. You'll see here later, and I'll show you how I use it and why I use it. But for the most part, I tend to stick with a flat top foundation brush. Now for her contour, I wanted to use something that was liquid or cream. I love to use liquid and cream, and if it's too oily, we can always go back and set it with a powder. But this is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. It's actually a concealer, but I'm using it in the shade C13. Now typically, I would go for um, a higher end product than this, but the color just matched perfectly for a contour. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I absolutely love this NYX Cosmetic Fan Brush for contouring. It just fits so nicely, especially under that cheekbone and helps blend that product out. So I take the product, you can see it's a little bit higher than underneath her cheekbone, but we are using that to diminish, to, to define the cheek and also take everything up. So you don't wanna go down too far with a contour. It can make the skin look muddy. So just blend that really nicely into the skin and up towards the temple. Okay, so after I contour, I always go in with concealer. Now, as I said earlier, if you're applying concealer, when you do the foundation before, make sure to avoid that under eye because we don't want so much product sitting there. Now, if you have dark circles, you wanna reach for an under eye concealer that is full coverage. This will help eliminate any of the blues or the grays under your under eye. If your concern is not the darkness and your concern is lifting, you could even go for a medium coverage concealer, but be sure to choose one that is hydrating. Today, I'm going to use the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is what I used on her lid to prep for the shadow, but I'm also using this underneath because it is so hydrating. Now, she doesn't have a lot of discoloration under her under eye, but I do like the way this feels. It's um, You really gotta work with it with blending it out. You'll see I'm using this brush. It's a concealer brush, and then I also tend to use my fingers as well. But with concealer, it's not just under eye, anything that you want to bring forward. So this is why they call this the highlight for the highlighting and contouring. It's not the actual highlight product that you're used to seeing with the shimmer in it, it is actually concealer. So highlight for the highlight and contour is always concealer. And what happens with the highlight is we want to bring that part of the face forward and that's why you go at least a shade or more um, lighter than your foundation. Well, I would say half a shade or a full shade lighter. Now, you'll see here, because this is so light on her, I mean, looking at it on camera, I'm happy with it, but in person, it was a little lighter than I would like. So I'm just taking a little bit of the foundation that we used and kind of blending that in to help transition the concealer to the contour. We don't want anything super harsh. So as I always say, blend, blend, blend. You want things to be seamless. So if you're a, if you're a beginner, you can just do that concealer under the under eye. But again, if it is too light, it'll be too harsh and not well blended. So um, just make sure that it transitions nicely. Now here I am going in with a beauty blender. Now make sure that it is damp when you use it. That is how it is designed to be used, not dry. So I'm just quickly taking that over her face. And what this does is blend everything out, but it also picks up any excess product that might be sitting on the face.
Hey, so now it is time to set that under eye. Now, if you have been watching any of my videos, I am loving the pink setting powder. I am going to use that on her under eye. It just helps brighten. And you could even use it all over the face, really. Um, always remember with using a powder, a little goes a long way. Again, the more product you put on, the more product that can settle into those fine lines. Starting off, just lightly set the under eye and the T-zone, and you can always reevaluate if your face needs more powder. It obviously is going to depend on the person and how much oil your skin naturally produces. But you can always add more as the day progresses, and you will get in a groove and figure out how much product works for you. So as I mentioned earlier, I've been using the pink setting powder. This is Morphe in the shade Brightening Pink. And I'm going to take that on a light fluffy brush and just brush that right under her under eye. You will see right here. And then I'm just using a very, very light hand. And I will take just a tiny bit of product and run it over her T-zone and her chin. There you go. And blend that out really nicely. I'm not really sure what we're laughing about here, but I'm sure you probably don't want to know. Now, she actually had a lot more hydration than I wanted, probably because of how well she takes care of her skin. So I'm just running a tiny bit of powder bronzer around where we contoured earlier. Now for blush, I am using the Charlotte Tilbury Pink Gasm Liquid Blush. It is so pretty on. I have used this on myself quite a bit lately, and this is her color exactly. If you've ever used the NARS Orgasm blush, this is very similar, except it's liquid form, and I just like the way that it comes out in a tube, but a little bit goes a long way. I'm putting that on the apples of her cheek, and this is what I love about a liquid or even a cream blush, is you can use your fingers to kind of manipulate the product, and it just really looks like skin and gives her cheeks just a nice finish. And I still take some of that product and just will drag it over her nose for color and blend that out. You all know I love the Maybelline Sky High Mascara, but today I reached for this Lancome Mascara, and I have to say, I was kind of disappointed. It was really clumpy, but I just popped this on her lashes, and next time I will be back with my Maybelline Sky High. And last but not least is the lip. I'm going in with the NYX Professional Makeup Lip Liner in the shade Sand Beige. I love this shade. It is so pretty. And you can really contour the lips with this. I'm going in on her bottom lip and just giving her a little bit of a pout under the center lip. And then really trimming up the sides of her lip with this product. And we could hear my little boy in the background saying something crazy. And we both cracked up and had to, seriously, I had to cut this scene because we were laughing so hard. All right, so I'm finishing up that top lip right here. And to finish off the lip, I'm going in with the Buxom Lip Gloss. This is a lip plumping gloss in the shade Dolly. I could use this shade on almost everyone. It is so pretty. I use it on brides actually quite a bit. I'm just putting that on her bottom lip to polish off this look and this color you can see looks great on her. And let me just say, if you can't laugh with my mom, then you probably have no sense of humor because she is funny. Okay guys, thank you so much. Look how beautiful she looks. I mean, she might kill me for saying this, but not bad for 67 years old, right? Thank you all so much for watching.